conservative organ which usually retains old parts such as the reptilian brainstem, amygdala and cerebellum and grows outwards if it needs more structures whilst retaining the earlier structures. The pineal eye seems to be the only part of the brain that has disappeared in its entirety. Well, you get, I think, parts of the brain which change their function. For example, there's an enormous area in dogs for smell that then gets converted to other uses, such as um, control of emotions. Emotional life is largely controlled by the same region uh, that is enormously important for smell in dogs. So you certainly get changes of scale. You get one bit getting smaller, another bit getting bigger. Uh, but you, I think you're right, uh, a sort of dramatic loss completely may be unique there, uh, it could be. The sensory capacity of the pineal eye and pineal gland may have guided the locomotive response of early cold-blooded vertebrates to appropriate environmental temperature. This would include both the local movement, for example, from hot rocks to shade, and also the much greater distances of seasonal migrations. There are a number of features which make the two Atara different from uh, lizards. They have uh, they don't have teeth, they have uh, teeth that are made up of, of the actual jawbone and they don't have any gums. The males also have no copulatory organ and they mate cloaca to cloaca, which is the same as birds. They also have a median eye on the top of their head. This is more prominent in the youngsters. Um, when they become adults it does start to grow over. The pineal eye in young sphenodons is a structure um, with all the components of lateral eyes, excepting the iris sphincter and orbital musculature. It is unlike the eye of a snail that can be moved on its stalk, and unlike lateral eyes, for it has no directional muscles or eyelid. This is a crucial point to understand. To change direction of the pineal eye, the whole head or whole animal must move. The existence of the parietal foramen in fossils indicates the presence of the median eye. The structure of the parietal foramen in fossil forms such as mammal-like reptiles varies from a simple opening to an elaborate boony ramification approaching a cone. The significance of such buttressing in certain species is, is uncertain. It may have served to protect the parietal eye or it may have functioned to enhance exposure of the eye. In animals in transition away from cold-blooded strategies towards warm-blooded self-thermoregulatory strategies, both their pineal eye and gland reduced in size and function. Disappearance of the pineal eye has been researched in some depth by husband and wife scientists Roth and Roth, amongst others. Their published findings confirm the importance of the role of both pineal gland and eye together in the evolutionary success of emerging vertebrates as they were required to adapt to thermally variable conditions including ice ages. It's possible to document three major vertebrate sequences in which the parietal eye has been progressively lost. The first sequence appeared in the Devonian fish assemblage the second in the Permo-Triassic reptilian assemblage, and the third is continuing amongst some reptiles such as Sphenodons. There's an evolutionary lessening in the number of E2 complex animals, which occurred in most vertebrates, except for certain small reptiles, under the gradual warming and seasonal climates of the early Mesozoic. The Permo-Triassic events are the most interesting for it is doing this time that the loss of the pineal eye occurred amongst mammal-like reptiles. Loss of the pineal eye seems to have occurred quite suddenly amongst ancestral dinosaurs, phacodonts, but much more gradually amongst mammal-like reptiles. Tolerance of temperature variation is probably as important a factor in vertebrate evolution as food supply. It is important to emphasize that mechanisms of body temperature regulation are flexible. Ectothermy, which is cold-bloodedness, thermoregulation dependent on the outside, and endothermy, or warm-bloodedness, thermoregulation which is internally governed, are both successful biological life strategies. There seems to be a synchronicity between the two events of losing the pineal eye and the emergence of new warm-blooded animals. Pineal eyes have only ever been found in fossils of cold-blooded species. E1 systems are found among both ectotherms and endotherms, warm-blooded animals. More of the thermoregulatory functions became taken over by the pineal gland in both E1 reptiles and in E1 birds and mammals. 
Early mammals were nocturnal, and the fact that they could function independently of environmental warmth and light increased their survival chances. Awareness of the strength of heat from the sun and the detection of the time of day, whether day or night, remained important, but was not quite so important. The interpretation of signals from the environment becomes abstract or symbolic rather than direct. The status of signal from the pineal eye probably becomes weaker as the cellular eye scales over as sphenodon changes from young to adult. The less attention needed for pineal eye messages permits greater self-determination of behaviour by the creature. Many other equally massive changes came about as animals became more independent from direct control by their environment. Melatonin production may have largely transferred from pineal eye to lateral eyes after the E2 to E1 transition. We can now reveal the nitty-gritty essentials of MV or phantom eye theory, so prepare for the opening of your third eye, metaphorically speaking, of course. The organic 